Welcome, pilots! Cosmos Kramer is in Arid Park in El Sautebier, about to confirm that the Level 4 Galent Cosmos agents require a standings of 6 with the Galent Federation. We talked to Krar Arg, only to be presented with an upgrade to Omega Dialogue? Hmm. After being alerted to a recent change on the forums, we find that in the patch notes from March 12th, Level 4 and 5 missions are indeed now restricted to Omega clones. So, Cosmos Kramer cries himself to sleep for the night, only to awaken refreshed with the realization that he'll just have to make a bunch of isk so he can upgrade his weak-ass clone to Omega status. Wanting to work our way through the Level 4 data center agents as well, we're going to need some isk to buy the remaining Serpentis dog tags anyway. And after a rather extended hiatus, <coughs> like two months playing mostly other games, here we are with the 500 plex needed to upgrade to an Omega clone. This involved a lot of high security combat exploration, selling the faction and dead space modules that can be found in these sites. Ooh, fancy sound. May I have another? Since we've been at our skill cap, but are now Omega, let's get more of these social skills going to help our faction standings. And now we head back to Krar Arg once again, to confirm that we don't yet have the standings needed to run level 4 Galent Cosmos missions. As expected, he gives us the cold shoulder. So we head to Dodixie, where I've had market orders going for the remaining Serpentis dog tags needed by the level 4 data center agents. Through process of elimination, it seems likely we'll need the Crystal, Diamond, and Platinum tags. For more information about these agents, refer to Part 9 of this series. First, we talk to Carver Bodasain, who's looking for 20 Platinum tags. This gives us a small gain in our Galent faction standings from 5.04 up to 5.20. Next is Hana Isurin, who's looking for 20 Crystal tags. Turning in these gives us another small gain up to 5.27. And finally we have Oasidia Gink, who's looking for 20 diamond tags. This bumps us up to 5.32, still quite a ways from the requirement of 6 for the level 4 Cosmos agents. It looks like we'll have to run regular level 4 missions for a little while. While running missions I've trained my connection skill up to level 3. This gives us an immediate Galent standings gain to 5.53. After running the 16 missions necessary, we've been offered a storyline mission from the nearest agent. Completing the mission titled Evolution, we see a rather substantial gain to 5.93. Looks like we'll need just one more to get us above 6. The second storyline mission we receive just involves collecting some Kernite, which we obtain off the market. This gives us a small gain to 6.01, just enough to get us back on track. After that rather long road, we head back to Arid Park in El Sotibier once again to see if Krar Arg will finally talk to us. Fanning the Flames Hi there, stranger! I'm Krar Arg, and I'm in charge of what we like to affectionately call FON's Gorilla Wing. Not for anyone would I have, no siree. We've received some information recently that gives us reason to believe we're Comey are up to some very clandestine things in this sector. In light of that, we're planning to mount a large offensive against a Wercomi mercenary outpost in the Kola Lee system. Now this is not something that's technically sanctioned by the top tiers of FON's command structure, but a certain portion of us feel that this must be done anyway. If you have a hauler handy and are willing to help with the logistics of this endeavor, I can pay you very well. Just keep quiet about it, okay? First off, I need some recon speeders brought to Del Tol. There's quite a large amount of them, so you'll need a good deal of cargo space. Are you up for it? All this work to be your errand boy, huh? Alright then, looks like we might want to switch to Anarius to ensure we have enough cargo space for the whole mission chain. Before accepting the mission, we pick up our Anarius and head back for the speeders. Back in Arid Park yet again, we let Mr. Arg here know we're ready. And we're off to deliver our cargo in Del Tol. Dropping off the speeders, we take a look at the Natura Warp Core Stabilizer Blueprint we received as a reward. It has three runs, and requires a whole lot of Yanjung materials to produce. 
Using the Compare tool, we see that it's the best warp core stabilizer in the game. It has the same stats as the Tech 2 module, but with a much lower CPU requirement. We head back to El Sotobier to see what Quarra has in store for us next. Preparations for the attack are going well, but a slight problem has presented itself. The squadron we have stationed in Flukel has run out of rocket fuel for their ground-based missile systems. This doesn't bode well for the offensive, so if you could head over to Adair and grab the supplies we have there and bring them over to Flukel, we would much appreciate it. We head off to Adairn to pick up the rocket fuel. Let's hope it stays stable while it's in our cargo hold. And we drop it off at the station in Flukel. Let's take a look at the Executive Remote Sensor Dampener Blueprint we received as a reward. It has three runs and requires some Serpentis materials to produce. Its targeting range and scan resolution penalties are slightly less than its Tech 2 counterpart, but its activation cost and CPU usage are significantly better. We return once again to Krar Arg in Arid Park for our final mission. We are almost ready for the offensive. Only one thing is missing. The squadron spearheading the attack is going to be mounting custom-built guidance systems, ones which will give them an unsurpassed ability to track ground-based targets on a flyby. We've had top engineers working on these systems for a while now, and they were finally completed yesterday. Go get the finished batch from Barmali and bring it to Del Tol, and we will be ready for our strike. Off we go to Barmali to pick up the guidance systems and then to Del Tol for our final stop. Great work, friend! We are now ready to strike the enemy where it will hurt them the most. You've been a valuable asset to the FON. Know that you have helped preserve one of the most beautiful and sacred spots in the entire Galent Federation. Do I at least get to watch you blow something up, Mr. Arg? Let's first take a look at the Love Medium Remote Armor Repairer Blueprint we received as a reward. It has three runs and requires some Yanjung materials to produce. Using the Compare tool, we see its repair amount is below the Tech 2 version, but with the same optimal range and falloff. Its activation cost and CPU requirements are extremely low, making it good for tight fits or to save capacitor. Taking a look at our standings, we see a small gain with the Galent Federation from 6.01 to 6.08. Shortly after this, I finished training the connection skill to level 4. This gives us an immediate bump up to 6.26. In the next video, we'll return to the Azure Chasm in Kola Lee to talk to level 4 mining agent Amsin Achapon. Thank you for watching my Galent Cosmos Mission Guide. If you enjoy my content, please let me know in the comments or by subscribing to my channel. The more I'm aware that people are watching, the more likely I'll be to make time to continue producing content. I've also begun creating a parody news series based on the Galent Cosmos missions. It's called the Elgintel Fake News Network. The first episode is loosely based on the events from the first Galent mission chain from part four of this series, titled Activist Fuel. Thanks again, and hope to see you back soon.